Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Mick at CameraBits, and this is a getting started webinar, our Q&A session for Photo Mechanic. Uh, I believe we just have uh, Keith here. He's the only one in the room at the moment. So, Keith, hello. Uh, greetings to Canada. I uh, hope you're staying cool up there. Um, yeah, the, so this is a, a bi-weekly series that we do, just a really informal um, thing where I get uh, Photo Mechanic up and either demo it for new users or answer questions uh, from existing users or whatnot. Um, so, Keith, hello. Um, have you used Photo Mechanic before? And actually, I might be able to do this better in the chat. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat. You say you're a newbie to PM6 Plus. Uh, does that mean you've used Photo Mechanic before? Um, if so, let me know and I could skip the, uh, the demo where I go through ingest and culling and all that and just talk about plus, but, uh, I'm, I'm curious to know, um, what your, uh, what your experience level is. I see someone else has also just joined. Yeah. Um, so uh, welcome, welcome. Like I said, I'm uh, Mick from CameraBits and we're going to be doing a, a demo of Photo Mechanic and Photo Mechanic Plus. Um, my plan is to do a quick demo showing... Uh, ingest and culling and the, really the basics of what photo mechanic is all about. Uh, but if you have any questions or specific requests, uh, certainly put them in the chat and uh, I'll do my best to uh, answer them. So let's see here. Let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, here is photo mechanic, sort of uh, the blank slate, a blank um, palette, as you will, for um, this is what we'll, we, we might see something similar to this the first time you launch Photo Mechanic. Now, what is Photo Mechanic? Photo Mechanic is uh, many different things. It's a photo browser. It's a metadata engine. It's a file management tool. Uh, the whole reason that Photo Mechanic exists is to make managing and organizing and uh, moving and selecting and viewing your files as fast as possible. Um, Sometimes it can be counterintuitive to add a new tool to your workflow to make it take less time, uh, but that's what the goal of Photo Mechanic is. Uh, a typical workflow with Photo Mechanic um, will be a photographer will uh, go to a shoot, say an event, a wedding, a game, um, a concert, and get back to their editing bay, whether that's uh, in their car or on the sideline or back in their studio. I use Photo Mechanic to copy the files off the memory card onto their computer, use Photo Mechanic to then uh, view the files very quickly and rate them, whether that's give them color classes, uh, star ratings, or uh, just tags. Uh, maybe add some metadata in terms of uh, keywords, caption, uh, copyright information, that sort of thing. Uh, captions being very important if you're working, say, with sports, photojournalism, or other things like that. Uh, keywords, uh, important for everyone. Uh, not something everyone seems to uh, be great at handling, but Photo Mechanic tries to make that easier. And um, then calling, selecting, selecting your winners, selecting your uh, what you want to take into your editing suite, whether that's Photoshop or Capture One or Lightroom or something along those lines. Uh, getting rid of the rejects so that they're not clogging up your storage, whether that's um, deleting them or hiding them. Um, we try to make that as fast as possible. And then uh, once you get done with your pixel editing, uh, you can use Photo Mechanic to transfer these files to an online destination like Smug Mug or Photo Shelter or Flickr uh, or an FTP site for your clients. Um, and yeah, you can uh, use Photo Mechanic to make copies, to create folders, to um, rename files, to add more fine-tuned metadata into your images. All right, let me, uh, let me look at the uh, comments here. I see Keith has said you're having major issues with Lightroom. So I want to move some images from several individual external hard drives into one large capacity HD. Can this be accomplished easy within PM6 Plus? Um, depending on how you need to do it, I think it would be very easy. Um, so let me talk a little bit about Photo Mechanic Real here. Over here, we have the Navigator. Now, the thing to note about Photo Mechanic is when you're looking at photos in the Navigator here, you call if you click on any of these folders, it just opens up the um, images in that folder. So when you're working with Photo Mechanic, it's not about uh, moving them into a database. It's just about looking at them where they already exist. Um, so 
for example, if you wanted to move a lot of images to uh, one particular drive, um, so let's, I'm going to close this image. I'm going to close this now. Say I have, um, I want to move everything in this demo folder. Um, first of all, I could just drag this demo folder to um, an external drive. This is what this is an external drive here, my working drive. That's external. I can just use it to drag within the navigator, um, or what I can do is open the folder and all the subfolders. This is a, a feature of Photo Mechanic not a lot of folks uh, seem to know about, but I can op open up my entire demo folder in a new contact sheet, and it's going to have all the images from all these folders all in one single contact sheet, right? And you can see down here a lot of uh, a lot of various things. And then you can go through here, and now um, if I wanted to uh, show me only the four and five star images in, in this uh, in this contact sheet, I can come up here to the star ratings widget and I can deselect zero through three. And then this shows me only the four stars or five stars. So, so if I wanted to now move these somewhere, I could uh, Command A or Control A, Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC. And I could just drag these to um, the external drive here. I can expand this to look at the different folders on this drive if I want to. Um, so if I have a bunch of folders here, I can do that. Um, I can use the Move tool um, within Photo Mechanic, the Copy Move tool, um, which you can access by doing Command Y or Control Y on a PC. Um, this is the Copy Options tool. This gives you a lot of different copy uh, options to do when you're copying files. Um, you can apply a metadata template to the copy files. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe when you move them to the drive, you would like them to have a certain extra keyword to say these are archived, or uh, maybe you want to give all the ones that you've copied over a, a blue color, color class or something along those lines, or maybe something in the caption or some other field saying that these were copied from somewhere else. Um, so if you, if you wanted to do that while you do the copying, uh, you could do that in this copy dialog by applying a metadata template. Um, you can uh, rename the files as you copy and move them, which I find very helpful sometimes. Um, for example, uh, here was the rename copy moved photos as, and I have the file name base. Now, whenever you see something in curly brackets, uh, that's known as a variable. And that's kind of a, a whole topic unto itself. Um, but variables are bits of information that are already exist in a file uh, or in the metadata for that file that you can reuse dynamically somewhere else. So this will rename the file as whatever the file was originally named, the file name base underscore with a copy. And I can either move them into the original folder, I can create a subfolder, I can select a new folder, um, which as you can see here, there's one here on the uh, external drive. And so that, yeah, you have a lot of different options in terms of copying and moving files within Photo Mechanic. It's, it's a very powerful tool for that. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what you're getting at, Keith, but um, hopefully that's uh, that gives you a... a, a pointer to the, the right direction. If you have any follow-up questions, I can certainly go over that. Um, but yeah, that's an example just of uh, Photo Mechanic being able to, to work with files. A lot of, like a lot, a lot can be accomplished within Photo Mechanic just within drag and drop. Like I said, these, this uh, navigator folder structure is uh, live. You can drag photos from out, out here into any folder on here uh, or use that copy move. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a basic there. So let me, um, like I said, Photo Mechanic, the Photo Mechanic, what they tried to do with Photo Mechanic is combine as many steps uh, as possible into single steps. That's why, let me go back into the copy move dialog here. Like I said, you can, um, like I said, apply the metadata, rename the files all in the same copy step. Uh, that's just one example. And uh, use the, like the, the, um, the variable to add some dynamic uh, dynamic information in there. Let's take a look at the metadata template just to show you what I mean. So let's open up the metadata template. And I have uh, a lot of metadata here, which you can uh, see obviously. But say I wanted to apply just a keyword to the images that I moved. Um, I would select the keywords. This, this check mark says we're gonna apply these keywords. And whenever you see this plus sign, this means append. If I uncheck it, it replaces the keywords. If I check it, it adds keywords to the end. And I might just say, if I wanted to apply the archived keyword to a certain uh, amount of, a certain number of photos that I'm moving, I would do it that way. Um, but we'll cancel that. And uh, no, I don't want to save those changes. Let's cancel it. So let's see. Daniel asks, uh, can you perhaps automate moving files from SD cards when inserted? 
I'd like to move them to a custom created folder based upon today's date. Yes, the, that is possible. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and show you how to do that. So, like I said, Photo Mechanic is often used to ingest files from a memory card, and I'm going to call it the ingest dialog right now. Um, here we go. This is the ingest dialog, and you have a number of options here. Um, one of these options is auto ingest, which means that as soon as you plug in a card, um, after you check this and then plug in a card, it will automatically ingest using these settings. Now, over here we can have uh, copy photos. So one of the, the destination for these files is, first of all, you're going to pick a primary destination, which is sort of your, your main pictures folder, or here it's my demo folder. Um, but then down here, the, you can kind of fine tune and create new folders. Now, uh, some of the options here are uh, very popular, powerful. You can either just directly into your primary folder, into a dated folder within that folder, uh, into a folder with a name, or into a, a dated folder, then a folder with a name. But even within these options, um, even if I just said into a folder with a name, I can still use those variables. Now, as I said, variables are bits of metadata that are within the files that you're copying. And if I were to um, use, I'll just click this button here, we'll all show you all the variables that are there. And then, so there's gonna be a lot, so it can be a little bit um, uh, overwhelming. Um, but there's things like the model of the camera, the make of the camera, um, the file size, serial number, the shutter speed, any sort of uh, EXIF data that's in there. Um, if your camera has uh, tagged your credit uh, copyright into there, um, that can be filled into any other field automatically. Uh, but one of the fields that I wanted to point out was, um, oh, where is it up here? Yeah, the time. So date sort. This is uh, this is the one I use a lot. So if I just double click this, it's going to add that into here. So date sort will be, we'll create a dated folder in this format, uh, which is the four years, two months, two days format. And so we'll close that. So I'm having creating a folder called date sort. And maybe I want to append um, something about the event. So I might say wedding. And it's going to now, if I plug in a new memory card, it's going to ingest those files to my demo folder. Then it's going to create a uh, date sort name and then an underscore wedding to create that folder. So that's, uh, that's how, now these are, I should say, these are the, the date sort of the file, the date of the, uh, of the actual images, I believe, not t today's date. Um, so that, I don't know how much uh, you need it to be. You can, here we go. There, there's a variable for today's date as well, um, which is today's sort. Um, so yeah, you can use that. If you need it to be today's date, uh, you can do that. There's different forms, formats for today's date as well. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, time sort or uh, today sort today sort year two you can create um if you wanted to like so you can combine these so if you want the year four with the month name and then the uh the time in military time um you can do that so there's uh, a lot of different options here for creating folders um a folder named by the uh by today's date or the date of the files all right, Keith, uh, going back to the move, says, will the move tool bring over the metadata file XMP as well? Yes, it will um, when you copy those files. That's, uh, that's a great point. Um, obviously, a lot of files, when you work with uh, metadata in files, especially raw files, um, depending on the software you're using, you can either um, write the metadata directly to the raw file or have a, a much safer is to have a sidecar file, which most of the Adobe software um, makes use of those sidecar files. And if you do the move copy within Photo Mechanic, it will... Um, copy the uh, XMP sidecar file over as well. He says, I've used keywords exclusively or extensively within Lightroom, but I understand that the Lightroom keyword file is not truly hierarchical. Are there any concerns with using the keyword structure from Lightroom in PM6 plus? Um, I don't know about concerns. Um, you might see that they are, uh, they come through, I believe they might be comma separated. I don't move a lot of, uh, files where, the, where I've keyworded them in Lightroom, I looked at them in Photo Mechanics. So I don't have a great answer for this, um, which is probably a good time for me to mention our support team is always uh, available as well during um, business hours, Monday through Friday, if you give us a call um, between uh, 9 and 5 p.m. on the, the west coast of the United States. Um, you can get a hold of a, a support agent uh, right away. The customer tech support is free for Photo Mechanic. It's free for... Um, people who have a license it's free for trial users so if you're just trying out photo mechanic um 
I know I've seen a lot of topics. We also have a good customer forum, and I've seen a lot of topics about the keywords there. I don't have a lot of experience bringing keywords from Lightroom into Photo Mechanic, so I can't say for sure, um, but I believe it does sort of flatten them into like a, either a comma separated or some other um, type of thing, if it's hierarchical in uh, Lightroom. Obviously, you can use Photo Mechanic to create uh, structured keywords, um, which I can uh, briefly show you that, I think, here. If I wanted to view the... <laughs> Here's the structured keywords panel. Um, if you don't know about structured keywords, they're kind of... Uh... So, for example, if you were to tag a file with, like, to say, cat, um, and you come through here and... So if you tagged your file kitten, you would also get the keyword cat, you would also get the keyword pets, and you would also get the keyword animals. Um, that's what a, a structured keyword set looks like. You can do that in uh, Photo Mechanic. And um, it takes a lot to uh, create these, to set these up. Obviously you have to uh, um, create these hierarchies yourself, or I believe there's a, a, um, a structured keyword website, I think managed by David Rakes, um, controlledvocabulary.com. I think he has a few of these that you can download and um, import into Photo Mechanic as well. All right, Nick says, can the GPS co-coordinates be uh, installed in the EXIF data in PM6? No, it won't be written into EXIF data. Photo Mechanic uh, does not write any EXIF data into files. Um, it will write into the standard um, uh, metadata space, the IPTC metadata space for the file. So it's not going to overwrite uh, any EXIF data for your files. Um, we kind of consider that uh, sort of sacred in a sense to uh, not, not mess with EXIF. Um, we're just adding uh, IPTC metadata, which can either be stored in the file itself or in an XMP sidecar file. In fact, let me, uh, I'm going to open up the preferences dialog here. Um, here's the preferences in Photo Mechanic. You'll see um, this drop down on a Mac. It's a drop down for the different sections of preferences. Um, if you're looking at this on a uh, Windows machine, these are tabs up here, but it's just the same thing, just separated into tabs. And we have preferences in here for how you're going to handle uh, most of the metadata. Um, so if you're going to write uh, metadata for JPEGs or TIFFs or whatever, you can either um, embed it. It's always going to be rewritten to XMP, but you can embed it into the file. Um, for raw files, you can allow the raw files to be modified um, or add it. Um, you can add embedded or always create or update the XMP sidecar file. And if you're working with some um, other uh, software to do your editing, if you come down here to this lightning bolt, we have a few presets here. So if you're working with Adobe products, it's going to give you the best settings, which is to always create the XMP sidecar file. Um, and it will, uh, for these particular products, whether it's you're working with an old copy of Aperture, Capture One, um, we'll, we'll pick, to the best of our knowledge, the current knowledge of what uh, the best metadata strategy is to use with those different softwares. Um, hope that helps you. Um, although I will say one thing that's helpful for me is uh, I usually, uh, my current workflow personally is to uh, use Camera Raw, and I'm saving a lot of PSDs lately. And Photo Mechanic just finally um, did a tweak that allows you to write GPS data into PSDs. And I'll show the Heek files from um, current super modern cameras or, or iPhones. Um, we can now write um, GPS data into the sidecar files for those or into the PSDs. So, yeah, that's uh, good. Let's see. Keith says, I have noticed that sometimes when I'm viewing images in a contact sheet, I also see an image that represents an XMP file. What causes this? Um, oh, so if you come over into view, um, see this check box that says view unknown files as proxies. Um, if you have that checked, you will see, for example, if you have uh, text files or PDFs, um, if you have that checked, you'll see those images in your contact sheet. If you uncheck it, it should hide those. Um, had any kind of unknown file types. Photo Mechanic generally will only show you uh, image files and uh, movie files as well. Um, the view for combined images means if you have RAW plus JPEG, um, if you view combined images that will combine them into a single thumbnail, if you uncheck this, it will separate the RAW and the JPEG into two separate uh, images. So for example, this is a RAW plus JPEG. Now I have the, uh, the JPEG and the RAW separately. 
<coughs> Excuse me. And uh, bring that back. Hope that helps. Um, yeah, so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit um, about um, ingesting, a little bit more about ingesting. I wanted to go through some of the things in preferences. Talk about some uh, preferences that I think are very important the first time you're setting up photo mechanic. Um, one of those is I'm going to go over to the, the contact sheet tab here, or the, um, the preview window, actually. So let me, uh, let me just cancel this and talk a little bit more generally about photo mechanics. So this, is, this area is what we call a contact sheet. These are the thumbnails of the images in a particular folder or set of folders. You can change the styles here. You can change how they're, they're sorted over here. You can create custom sorts. Uh, anything, remember that the, the variables have information in the file. If I wanted to sort by, say, the, the uh, pixel width, I could do that. If I wanted to sort by um, file size, you can do that. Any um, edit custom just means any of these 10 things, you could edit and create um, sort by whatever variable you wanted to use. So if you wanted to sort by the actual time, if you wanted to sort by the day of the week, um, any of these variables, you can actually sort by them uh, by, by creating a custom sort. Uh, we talked briefly about the uh, the star rating widgets over here. Um, these are just filters for viewing images. If you wanted to uh, only view the green color classes, um, it's uh, you can either deselect all the colors except green, or if you hold down the Option key on a Mac, uh, I believe it's Alt on a PC, it deselects all the others automatically. So I'm going to Option click green. I'm going to show me only the green images here. Uh, and as you can see, this go this moves very quickly. This is. Um, you know, I have, a, I have a mix of JPEGs and RAWs in here, but as you, one of the, uh, the key features of why so many people use Photo Mechanic is the fact that you can scroll through images, including RAW files, very, very quickly. Uh, Photo Mechanic has done a lot of work, not only with uh, using the embedded JPEG in the image, but also pre-caching and can, can sort of see which direction you're scrolling and can will, will uh, do a lot of things there to, to speed up the, the viewing process. The reason... Uh, why we do that, if you're coloring images, say a thousand, two thousand images from an event, whether that be a wedding, a concert, or a game, and if, if you're trying to call or view those in Lightroom or some other image processor that uh, is going to be doing pixel editing for you, it's going to have to render the entire RAW file, and that can take maybe a couple seconds, uh, maybe a little bit longer, depending on your uh, system. And if you're just calling, you, you don't need to do the rendering for, uh, to, to do pixel editing, so Photo Mechanic is actually able to do that much quicker. So we've heard, uh, so if you think about a thousand images that you're looking at, uh, taking one at a time, and you're taking a couple seconds for each one, that uh, that time adds up, and it can save you, um, you know, as many hours. We've heard, I've heard some photographers say that they've gotten their weekends back. Things, calling tasks after a wedding that used to take them uh, eight, nine, ten hours uh, are now done in uh, two or three, and they can uh, get on with the rest of their day, or their editing tasks, or save them a lot of time. So that's... Uh, that's sort of the the reason Photo Mechanic exists. It was actually originally written for photographers at the Super Bowl um, to be able to go through images very fast, find the uh, the three winners to get them transmitted off to the editor so that they could hit the wire service, you know, by halftime. So we're talking uh, minutes and seconds here where, where those things uh, matter. All right, James is there. Hello, James. Photo workflow. I have uh, numerous hard drives and multiple folders with thousands of photos. I've chosen PM6 Plus. What is the best process? Ingest into one main folder and then what? Well, um, it's a good question. If, so if Depending on what you're doing or how you want to organize, here's one suggestion that um, I might consider if I have a lot of files on many different hard drives and I wanted to move them into one particular, if, if say I have one large external drive, and if I, if I actually wanted to move those files for whatever reason, uh, I might, uh, <coughs> excuse me, like I might uh, go to like a drive and open all the files. Like, so I, I might take one drive here and do the same thing I did with the demo folder where I open the folder and all the subfolders in a new contact sheet, right? So say, see, I have all these different folders here. If I say where I were to select all these images and go into copy move, I might go to... Um, uh, create a new folder, or no, I went, uh, what I would do is create a new folder, but I might name this. Um, so I, first of all, I would select where this folder was going to be. Say if I have a, a big new hard drive, I might put it uh, uh, there. 
So open that. So and then I would create um, a whole new folder structure. So I might say uh, put in the variable for year, right? Um, spell that right. Put a slash in here, and I might be put another. So I'm creating a whole new folder structure here, right? Um, using the variable for the month name, which is the three-letter month name, and this is going to take every image in this folder from all these different folders, move them to the new folder on the new hard drive. It's going to create dynamically create years, uh, year folders for all of them, and then month folders. So then all of these images would be moved to a new drive with uh, with under years and months. That's just one suggestion. If I were to uh, like, if I if I really needed to like start brute force organizing a lot of folders from uh, different things. Just a thought, um, as I said, you can also just drag things. If you have here, if I just want to move a couple folders, I can uh, take this here and drag it to the new drive as well. Um, now, if you're using PM6 Plus and you have all these images on different uh, drives, there's really not um, a compelling reason why you would actually need to move any of those files as well. Uh, let me talk a little bit about PM6 Plus, or excuse me, PM Plus. Now, Photo Mechanic Plus is an actual image database. So this, everything we've, I've shown you so far has been about uh, Photo Mechanic. Photo Mechanic was designed to work basically with single sessions of photos and then moving them to where they need to be. Uh, we did a lot of work and we said folks also wanted a tool to manage their entire collections and we call that Photo Mechanic Plus. Um, if you have Photo Mechanic Plus, you come over here to click this um, thing and here we have the Plus database. So I've created uh, a database here, my, um, um, I think I might need to do some re-indexing, but so I have all these images here in, in my search, and if I wanted to now browse these images, I can, like, without even moving them into different folders, I can go and browse them by the capture time, and I can see they're or already organized here in here by date, um, by year. I have, uh, I think I have about 76,000 images in my catalog right now, and say I wanted to go into, um, find all the images from 2011, I could do that, just double click here, we have all these, a lot of random photos here. Um, but yeah, so I didn't have to, like, if I want to keep these organized, I don't need to actually move them around. I can use Photo Mechanic Plus to just browse, if I want to browse them, I can, this is all created. So these images are on, uh, some of them on my local drive, some of them are on an external drive. Um, as long as they're in, the, as long as the catalog itself is, uh, the search box is checked for these catalogs, uh, I'll be able to search them all. If I only wanted to search, uh, one drive, uncheck that. And then, as you can see, the numbers all changed here. And now I would only see the images from that uh, from this particular catalog. Uh, one of my favorite features of Photo Mechanic Plus, actually, is the ability to switch between catalogs so quickly. Um, I would often create different catalogs for different years when I was in Lightroom. And if I needed to switch or go back to a different catalog, it would involve restarting the whole program, which took a long time. Here, if I want to switch between, say, an archive catalog here and then not, just check it. Just uh, check the different box, and you're already good to go. I can now go in here and say... Uh, show the images from, you know, 2007. So, yeah, it's uh, that's kind of the beauty of using Photo Mechanic Plus when it creates a database is that you don't really, at, at that point, you don't need to know exactly where the images are to view and manage them. Um, if when you're in looking at an image and you don't know where it is, if you uh, come down here, if you look down at the very bottom, there's a status that will show you the folder where it actually is. And I can see which drive this is on. This is on my Mixan, my SanDisk external SSD. Um, actually in a Lightroom because this used to be in an old catalog, for which uh, had the year thing. So those, like I still have a lot of leftover Lightroom folder structure down here, which uh, I don't think is ideal, but since I'm using... Um, Cat the catalog feature in Photo Mechanic Plus, I don't really care about like the folder structure as much. I know some people, some folks will need to do that for um, their management tools, and that's why I said if I wanted to now take these images and start moving them and rearranging them into new folders, say dated folders, I could actually select 76,000 images or 4,000 images, whatever, and use the same tools that we use in uh, Photo Mechanic, the copy move tool, to start moving these around and start if, like creating subfolders, creating dynamic folders with variable names. If I said, um, oh, I don't know, if you wanted to organize them by file name or frame number or any of these any of these variables that you wanted to create folders based on that information, you, you would be able to do that. Um, it might take a long time to do the copy move on, on large tens of thousands of files. It might take a while, uh, but it's certainly doable. Sure, James, no problem. I hope that helps. Like I said, um, 
if you have specific needs for how you want to organize your images, you could potentially give our support team a call. I know um, if you get a hold of Andrew, um, he's a really a, a Photo Mechanic Plus expert in terms of working with the catalog and the data. Um, he it can answer a little bit more questions than I can. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm using it currently to, to organize a lot, a lot of my old music files, uh, music photos. Um, but it's uh, I found it very, that's like, this is how I do it. And then if I say, say if I need to do a search, um, if you come back here to the search bar and you click this star, you'll see the, the manage, um, the search snapshots. But if you go to search examples, this, uh, this is very helpful for me. So you could create a, a search, say for um, the capture time between 2004 and 2005, combine that with a keyword name, um, say music um, from a certain file um, uh, time base. And once you have that search, you could then save that search and that almost becomes like a smart collection. So if you say, if I want to see all the um, files that I've tagged with the keyword music from, say, the past six months, um, I could create a search for that. Now, we also have tools to create collections for things like that. I don't personally use collections very much because I find the search and save searches so incredibly powerful. Um, I could create a save search like that, and it acts very much like a sort of like a smart collection, which will show me a dynamic, only the images from the past six months um, with a certain keyword. Hopefully that helps you. Now, as you can see, these images have a yellow dot. This means that these images are on an external drive that's currently not connected. Um, so I can't do, I can't change the metadata. Uh, this is a feature that we uh, understand a lot of folks really want, and it is something we're working on. Um, currently, like if I were to, now if I wanted to add um, keywords to this file, I would not be able to do that because this is yellow. I could find it and I could look where it is and I'd say, oh, I need to work on this file. Go find this drive, mixand and plug it in and then I'd be able to edit these folders. Um, but currently as it seems, I can't make any edits to this um, until I plug in the drive. So that's that's something to be aware of. Uh, we under we realize it's not uh, ideal. It would be great if you could uh, add metadata to files while they're offline and then have it update. That's something we are working on, um, but it's not ready yet. So that's uh, something to stay tuned for. Um, one thing I also wanted to show, I also have uh, in my info, so I double clicked on this image and you can see I have the folder shown up in the metadata info as well. So if I'm looking at this in the preview window, um, I have the folder here. Now this photo mechanic by default does not show the folder here, but I want to show you how I did that in case uh, you find this helpful. Um, if you go to um, edit settings, set info text. This, uh, this info text here is um, down here. So it's, uh, there are a lot of things in here like date, time, keywords, model number. I created a folder path structure and then I put uh, the folder path variable into my info text so that I could see it very quickly when I'm looking at the preview window. And I also threw the file size in there. That's, uh, that's helpful for me as well. Um, but you can customize this information, the data in, this, uh, in the info dialog for the, the preview window to show whatever it is that you need. Um, a lot of people like don't need things like serial number or frame number. Oh, that's fine. You can take it out. I'll leave it in there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's something that I've found when I'm working with the catalog and different external drives, having that folder there so I can quickly tell where that image is. Very helpful for me. But like I said, or you can all, always see it down here in the uh, sort of the, the status bar um, if you're on the, looking at the contact sheets down there. Um. All right, so uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, active catalogs. So I need to do some maintenance on these catalogs because I've recently updated my photo mechanic. So what I'm gonna have to do is in the maintenance, so in the catalog, I'll have to f fish out this drive from the, the um, shelf that it's on. And then I'll come over into uh, catalog management and I will find that drive. As you can see, it's got the check mark, which means I need an update. So I will uh, eventually select this and do some come down here to maintenance, and I would do update the catalog version. I'll have to uh, have to do that soon. I just I just updated the Photo Mechanic Plus to the new version because I wanted that uh, feature to be able to tag GPS coordinates into G, into PSD files. Um, so, but I haven't updated my catalog. So that's but that's how you would do that. You would do some catalog catalog management. Um, like I said, it shows you here that up, an update is needed, and I would be able to go into here and uh, do the update recommended. So. That would, uh, for, for a catalog with, you know, 60,000, 70,000 files, might take an hour or two, depending on how fast your, uh, fast your machine is. So I might do that uh, as I go off to lunch or something. 
So that's a brief, I, 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 I went kind of quickly on this. I'm not sure how much of uh, the basic photomechanic functionality. So I tried to explain it as best uh, I could. But if I, if I went too fast on something, let me know if you're curious about something else. Um, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, the, uh, like I said, doing searches in here is, I find extremely fast. You know, this, this uh, contact sheet now has 14,000 images in it, and I can start scrolling through here. And it's very, very quick, very, um, very fast. Um, I wish I had had this tool back when I was shooting a lot more concerts. I would have, uh, there was a lot of late nights, uh, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., where I was still working on calling files and managing them that I could have, uh, could have handled a lot quicker had I been a photo mechanic user back in the day. Oh my gosh, Shay Redding Rogers, what is up? Sorry, uh, yeah, good to see you. Um, Shay is a, a great friend of Camera Bits and uh, a wonderful photographer. So great to see you, Shay. Um, this uh, session, by the way, after we finish it here, will be available. If you go to the URL, um, say later today, the entire session will be available to, to view the whole thing. So if you something you missed and you wanted to go back, um, you can just find it at the same YouTube URL. Um, this whole uh, video will still be there. Haha, <laughs> James asked that exact question. So yes, James, that's, uh, like I said, if you come to the exact same URL you got to this for, um, as soon as, I think right after I finish it, it takes a, maybe a couple minutes to process, but then YouTube will have it up and you can stream the whole thing again. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, um, let's see. Oh, it's, uh, we've been moving along here. Is there anything else? Uh, I guess, I don't know, like I said, there's a lot of other things I could cover. I didn't really create one single narrative so i don't know what else that i want to do unless you have any specific other questions otherwise i will probably wrap this up here um we went through i showed you a little bit about preferences i showed you a little bit about variables um, we talked about the copy move tool um, we talked a little bit about uh, the catalog and photo mechanic plus and how i use it like i said i use the search most of the time search and browse um, you can also create filters around those same types of things um, so if I wanted to show, like, show me all the, you know, four-star filters and um, add different things in there so I could uh, create. So I could have a filter that show me five stars with the keyword music, right? So we'll select that. And then again, once you create these filters, you can then save these filter collections as a snapshot. So here's, like I said, here's something, uh, sort of a dynamic collection that shows me any images in my catalog with the, taken with an XE4, uh, my Fuji camera that is three plus stars. If I select that, um, it will select those as well. So that's, uh, um, <coughs> that's a basic thing I said. I don't use filters that much, but I know a lot of people um, think about things in different ways. So we, we try to make it um, useful for people to depend, no matter how you think about your file. Some people think about search, some people think about filter, um, different mindsets, and we try to accommodate each of those. All right, Keith, yeah, um, I hope the cleanup goes well. As I said, give us a, give us a call if you have uh, any further questions, we'd be very happy to help. Um, other than that, uh, thank you folks for coming. We're gonna, I'll do another one of these in, in another two weeks. Feel free to come back if you, uh, for some reason you find this format very helpful. Um, come back again and ask follow-up questions or um, contact support directly either way. Um, we're happy to help if we can. Um, other than that, thank you all very much. Thanks for checking out Photo Mechanic. Hope you're staying cool. I know it's uh, hot up in Canada. It's very cool here in Oregon today. Um, but wherever you are, I hope you're having a, a great day and uh, happy photographing. And, oh, wait, before I go, let's see. Keith says, final question. Any suggestions when using Capture Pro 1? Um, suggestions. Well, like I said, one thing in the um, preferences in the XMP thing, um, you can do the presets here for Capture 1, and this might help you in terms of moving back and forth. I don't use Capture 1. I know Capture 1... Um, I think they have something with the um, DNG files. They have something where they 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 insist on putting uh, metadata in the DNG, or maybe they insist on making a sidecar. I can't. One of the two. The way they handle DNG files, I think, is a little strange, um, and can cause maybe some issues with Photo Mechanic, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure, um, but if you're not working with DNGs, I think you're fine. 
Um, but I uh, I tried capture one. I, I couldn't seem to get my head wrapped around it. But I, I confess I didn't try very uh, very for a very long time to make that adjustment. Um, but I I seem to remember when I was using capture one, I ended up um, having to look at certain folders a lot. So I would come from here to the navigator, and I had like uh, capture one folders that I kept dragging up into my favorites so that I could get to them very quickly. Um, I don't know if anyone uses that, but if I um, say I wanted to access a folder a lot, I can just drag this up into the um, favorites too, and then it's always accessible. If I want to get rid of it, I can remove it from the favorites, but it doesn't delete it at all. It's just right here. <coughs> all right. Oh, greetings to Ireland. Good, uh, good to talk to you. Like I said, um, uh, once again, if you come back to this URL, you can see the entire video. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. It's been 40 minutes, so... Um, thanks a lot again for coming. Have a great day to uh, all the friends around the world. And uh, yeah, have a great day and happy photographing. See you guys later.